दी डायमंड सूत्र लिसन वेल सुबती बुद्ध स्पीक्स टू सुब अ मैन लाइक सुबती टेंस टू गो इन वर्ड इफ ही इज नॉट मेकिंग एनी एफर्ट he will drown into his being and he will be lost there to be outside he will have to make conscious effort just the opposite is the case with you with a very great effort you can rarely move into your inner being for a single moment thought stops and you are lost in the inner splendor but it rarely happens and that too after a long and arduous effort you are lost in your thoughts the process of thought continues unabated you cannot reach to your inner being this is the situation with you but this rarely happens and that too after long and arduous effort meditation and yoga this and that and then only for a few moments you have that beauty or the benediction of being in commune with your being the sky opens the clouds have disappeared there is light there is life and there is utter joy but this happens only for a few rare moments and then next moment all is lost this happens again and again if you make great effort to be attentive you attain to inner experience with subhuti the opposite is the case you have to stop the thought process and for that you have to make great effort and that too with great effort it may happen that your thought process may slow down or the stampede of thoughts may stop completely but this can happen only for a few moments with subhuti just the opposite is the case he is lost in his inner subtraction he is utterly absorbed in his inner joy and unless he makes an effort he will not be able to listen to all that buddha is saying he is perfectly capable of listening to buddha's silence you are not able to listen to buddha because there is inner noise i am speaking to you but a parallel dialogue is going on certain things you agree with me other things you do not agree with me there is a constant inner dialogue going on you have to stop this process only then you can listen to me but subhuti is different he is lost in his inner subtraction he can understand buddha's silence because he has reached to that level there is no thoughts running helter skelter in him there is no disturbance no noise he is commune to the silence of buddha if buddha is silent there is a communion between subhuti and buddha but if buddha is saying something then subhuti has to make an effort he has to pull himself together he has to come out he has to come to the level of the body 
you are at the level of the body but if some communion happens at the level of soul you cannot be in touch with it on the contrary subhuti in is in the realm of the being beyond body he has attained to bodilessness so he cannot feel anything that relates to the body his speaking happens at the level of the body and silence happens at the level of level beyond the body in silence all the instruments of the body are has dissolved into an utter silence and they are inoperative the organs of action and organs of perception but subhuti's case in order for him to listen he has to come to the level of the body and he has to be attentive because again and again he is drowning in the silence it is something like this a person is drunkard and you are trying to tell him something he cannot keep his attention again and again he is drowning into his unconsciousness but subhuti is totally conscious of his innerness that to he has to make his effort to enter to listen to it hence buddha says these strange words listen well and attentively o subhuti and this is for the first time that i am explaining these words to you for 25 centuries nobody spoke on these words really for 25 centuries nobody spoke on these words they have been taken as ordinary as if buddha is speaking to someone else an ordinary person and he says listen well attentively here buddha is not talking to an ordinary human being he is speaking to subhuti a bodhisattva someone who has attained to his innerness he can understand the language of silence he can commune there but when buddha is speaking the words are flowing strangely enough for 25 centuries nobody has commented rightly it was only in the last century that osho spoke the essence of these sutras people have been thinking they understand the meaning of the words the meaning of these words changes the meaning depends by whom they are being used and to whom these words are addressed i am speaking where the words are emerging words are emerging from my innerness there is utter silence within me the words are emerging from the deepest core of my silence and whom they are being addressed to set of people who has been in communion with me for a long time who can decipher my silence who can understand the meaning of the words that i am using through the gestures through the modulations through the variation in the expressions therefore the meaning of the words depends on the context and the circumstances as well the words do not have any meaning in themselves the words are meaningless the meaning arises only in a particular situation here in this particular session first of all a buddha the awakened one creates a situation 
and when he creates a situation he has already taken you away from the realm where you are to the realm where he is just as when a group of people comes to your house you can talk to them outside your gate but there is cars passing there is all kind of noise and they cannot listen to you well even if you are trying to make an effort a, a word begins to spurt out of you same time wheezing a car passes the word is lost in it so what you do you take him to your inner chamber maybe a soundproof room where there is no disturbance of your own there is no kind of disturbance there you place them to be seated and there you are going to start having the meeting then whatsoever you speak your gestures will be understood your expressions your words so words do not have any meaning in themselves the words are meaningless and the meaning arises only in a particular situation now the situation is very rare buddha has used those words that anand is reporting thousands of times every day he has to use those words while addressing the people now a person according to his own innerness develops a vocabulary maybe of thousand words or ten thousand words and he uses those words again and again in different permutation and combinations just as a musician he uses certain ragas certain notes in various permutation and combinations to create the musical symphony so the buddha is using a certain kind of a vocabulary certain kind of gestures that is why whatsoever he is speaking he creates the same ambience same effect now the situation is very rare buddha has used these words thousands of times every day he had to use these words and while addressing the people Buddha will begin the sermon with the words listen well attentively as a result all those who have commented on the diamond sutra have missed the point that this time Buddha is not speaking to the common people the words are seen when i am speaking to an ordinary person i will say listen listen attentively and i am speaking to you you are special again i am saying listen well and attentively the the essence of these words differ in each circumstance and situation so as a result all those who have commented on the diamond sutra have missed the point that this time buddha is not speaking to an ordinary common monk instead he is addressing to a buddha bodhisattva so subuti is a bodhisattva he is part of the commune in the broader sense he is a monk but he is a monk of an advanced stage his level of understanding is far beyond the understanding of an ordinary monk who is recruited only just the other day so he is using these words to address to subuti because this particular dialogue of diamond sutra is only happening between subuti and buddha he is not having anybody else 
So sometimes it happens the master creates a communion only for a particular student and he speaks to him and through him he speaks. He is addressing a bodhisattva. None of these commentators who commented on the Diamond Sutra were Buddhas themselves. They only knew the language. In order to understand my words, you have to understand the essence that I am, the energy field that I manifest, the energy field that flows, overflows through me through these words. I am using ordinary words, but with the ordinary words comes the essence of my being, my energy field. Unless you are familiar with this, you will not be able to understand my words because I am not using the language, using the language in the environment of my innerness. So the effect of those will be different. It is the words, their choice, their gaps, and my inner experience, the inner joy or bliss that I am, is used together to create a commune, communion with you. In fact, I am transferring my inner silence, my inner awakening, through the arrangement of these words to you. So it is not the word. Jalaluddin Rumi created his own vocabulary. Sometimes he will use the same word in the same sentence with a different accent. Those who are familiar with William Shakespeare, he was the master of phonics. He will use this same word in the same sentence in a different arrangement and will give a different meaning. Buddha is drowned in his innerness. He is aware of his innerness. He is communicating, communing his innerness, transferring that inner silence that he has attained through the words to you. There is a great difference in that. I am transferring my energy field through you, but how can I do? If you are attuned like Subhuti, he don't need to use the words. When I used to sit down in the company of my Sheikh Sufi Omkarna, There was no need for words. He is silent and I am silent. The communion happens. You would experience those who have experienced ever the moment of intense love. In the moments of intense love, words be, become meaningless. You do not have to speak. Love, in fact, speaks through the silence gestures and pronounces aesthetic beauties. You do not have to speak. The lovers do not speak, just the gestures. Through the gestures, through the presence, the silence is communion, communed. Silence is communicated. And silence is inner joy or the bliss. So love gives the first taste of this silent communion. Subhuti is capable of that. So he can understand Buddha's silence well, but he cannot understand his words because again and again he is falling into that silence. And an ordinary person who is at the level of the words, there is a problem with him as well. The moment Buddha starts speaking, he starts interpreting the words of Buddha. He starts as if everything that is being poured into the pot, that 
the person is, the pot is dirty inside and whatsoever is put into it becomes contaminated. So when Buddha pours his being through the words into him, into his dirty pot, it gets defiled. And Subhuti's pot is so clean that again and again he forgets the word, he starts going into the inner silence. To be in the company of a Buddha, you have to be so alert and awake that you have to imbibe his silence through the words. It is not the word that I am using, words are simply an instrument through which I am communing, communing the inner silence, the energy field. So maybe that you may start falling into that silence. The moment I speak, every time when you listen to a video, a talk, session of an awakened one, you are being connected to your innerness and at least for a few moments, if not for the entire duration, you will be lost into silence as if you have drowned into a subtle presence which you cannot see. You can feel it and you have drowned into it. So you are listening to his silence but to be in the company of a Buddha means you have to be attentive, so attentive that you are aware of the two aspects, his silence as well as his words. Both are meaningful and the message comes through the messages contained in the silence, but it is communed, communicated through the words. So you have to be attentive on both. And this is the point the commentators on Diamond Sutra have missed. They simply forgot the inner silence of the Buddha and they started commenting on the words. That is why I said it is a rare occasion that these sutras in the past centuries have not been spoken with such depth. So all those who have commented on the Diamond Sutra have missed the point that this time Buddha is not speaking to the common people. Although Subhuti is a monk, but is a monk of a rare understanding. He is like a PhD student than an ordinary Form 1 student. Subhuti has reached to the end of his awakening and now Buddha is again addressing to him. What difference would you feel when you are speaking to a, to a PhD student and to a standard one or Form 1 student? There is a difference in their level of understanding. And that difference in the level of understanding will change the entire situation, the choice of the words. You have to speak to the PhD students in symbols. Just a hint and he is able to understand. If you are speaking to a chef who has reached to the level of master chef but he has not reached to the experience that you have as a master chef. You are a master chef, the other has just graduated from the competition of the master chef, he has passed the exams, he can understand. He is, as far as the degree is concerned, he has the same degree as you have. But as far as the experience is concerned, his experience is far more vast 
than your experience. So when he is speaking to you, he can use those technical terms. When I am speaking to an expert, I will say that just Julian it. And an ordinary person will say, what did you say, what is Julian? I cannot tell him what is Julian. But to a somebody who understands, I will tell him just Julian it. Julian the carrots. And because he understands the technical terminology, he understands my gestures. When I speak, just do it because you need the Julians and a few words the entire message is coming. So I do not have to make great effort but you have to be attentive. So as a result Buddha is not speaking to an ordinary person. Subhuti is a bodhisattva he is a monk of a very high standard, almost on the verge of being a Buddha, just as you have passed the Mastership exam, but you still lack the experience of the Grand Mastership. It will take for you a couple years. And during that period, the experience of that master chef who taught you will be far more even. So the gap will always remain, but you will come closer to his level of understanding. So this is a state that Subhuti is a Bodhisattva. Next, any moment he can become a Buddha. And Buddha is addressing to him. So he says, Subhuti, listen well and listen attentively. They only knew the language, the ordinary people, the ordinary monks. However, they were completely unaware of the strange situation that is happening between Subhati and Buddha. Because Subhati is drowned in the silence, he can decipher the silence and Buddha has to speak to him. And how can he speak? He can speak through the words. Buddha has not addressed the Diamond Sutra to an ordinary human being. That is why it is taking a lot more sessions to explain to the context in which Buddha is, is speaking to Subhuti. Only then you can grasp the essence of the sutras. Buddha has addressed this sutras to somebody who is very close to buddhahood, one who is just on the boundary of it, just ready to enter the buddhahood. This is the context and he starts the statement with therefore. Most of these scriptures begin or the messages begin therefore. Therefore means it's a continuity. When a kawal sings, he takes an interlude. He leaves the main trend of thoughts in a poetic expression. He starts a musical alap rendition uses some other words and then comes back and connect to where he was speaking. Sometimes in his speaking, I am speaking to you, all of a sudden I pause there and take you through another example and then connect back with you where I had asked you to stop and where I have reached 
a few steps forward and come back and connect. If you are not attentive, you will not be able to understand. That is why Buddha is using the word therefore. Therefore, Subhuti, listen well and attentively. The almost all the scriptures begins. Thus I have heard. Anand says, Thus I have heard. The Hindu scriptures, the Sanskrit scriptures begins Athato, thus, therefore. Therefore, Subhuti, listen well and attentively. Now, this word therefore is also very illogical. The word therefore is only logical when it comes as part, as a concluding part of a logical syllogism. All men die. Socrates is a man. Therefore, Socrates is mortal. All men die. This is logic. And Socrates is a man, so Socrates is mortal. In this context, the word therefore is perfectly right. It is part of a syllogism, a conclusion. But there is no logic. Nothing has preceded it. There has been no premise. And Buddha starts with the conclusion, therefore. That too has a unique strangeness about it. And that is indeed the Buddha's way. And this is his beauty as well. Then when Buddha is speaking to another monk, Sariputra, he was all, almost like the same level of understanding as Subhuti is. But he speaks to him the Heart Sutra, Prajna Paramitra, Hridayam Sutra. This is how this is how in Heart Sutra Buddha address Sariputra. Buddha begins the Sutra, therefore Sariputra, and Sariputra is another monk who is a Bodhisattva and on the verge of being a Buddha. And now in the Diamond Sutra he says, therefore Subhuti. Subhuti has not said anything for which therefore is needed. Subhuti is just drowned in his silence. He has not uttered a single word. Buddha has not said anything for which therefore is needed. But it is very important. However, something is present in Subhuti's being. Therefore is addressed to that inner presence. Something is present in Subhuti's being and this word therefore is addressed to that inner presence. Nothing has been uttered as yet. A master looks within you first and then he responds to what is present in you. A master responds more to your silence than to your words. A master is more interested in your quest than your questions. The word question comes from the root quest and in the process of time we have lost the origin and probably we have forgotten the inner connection between quest and question. A master is more interested in your needs than in your questions. The word therefore indicates a subtle need in the innermost being of Bodhisattva that Subhuti is. Maybe Subhuti himself is not aware of it. Maybe Subhuti will take a little time to become aware of it. So Buddha addresses all that is needed for inward journey of Subhuti. The master has to look 
into the disciple's being and the master has to respond to the inner needs whether expressed or unexpressed. Many times I respond to your unexpressed needs and even you are not aware of your needs and I address those needs. I address to those needs of which you are not aware and that is not the point. Maybe left alone the disciple will take months to find out the need, what he actually needs. If you if the doctor has to find out what is your problem, he uses the MRI scan and within a second, a few minutes, he is able to understand your entire situation. Just you come in front of the machine, it reveals all your innerness. So the moment you come, under the scan of the Buddha, the awakened one, he looks into your innerness. On your own, the disciple will take months to find out the need or he may take even the years and maybe he may not be able to understand even in lives. But the master not only looks into your past, or your present, but into your future as well. What is going to be your need tomorrow and the day after tomorrow, this life and the next life, the Master provides for the entire journey. The word therefore is related to implicit need of Subhuti and his inner being. What is the implicit need within Subhuti? Buddha is addressing to that. So when I am speaking to you all, I am speaking, addressing to that implicit need within each one of you that you are not aware of it. Maybe that you may not be aware at all of that. I am addressing to that. This is why when I am speaking to you, I am using the words of the, the Diamond Sutra as an excuse but whatsoever I am speaking is the Diamond Sutra. So this is why it is very important.